Okay, I'm recording. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to present. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Today I'm going to be presenting my research on the history of tourism in the Ozark region and Branson, Missouri in the early to mid 20th century. Um, so I wanted to look specifically at if there were any connections between the stereotypes of the Ozark hillbilly and entertainment in the region during this time. I remembered my various trips to Branson and thought about the recreation that I took part in on these trips. And I specifically um, recall Silver Dollar City and all of their attractions like square dancing shows. There were train robbery reenactments and dueling reenactments. And also those down home country style candy stores, mom and pop mercantile stores. I also remember that employees in the park wore older looking clothing straw hats and bonnets and they also were using pretty emphasized and overly exaggerated country accents so this got me thinking and also prompted me to focus my research on the presence of this image of the ozark country native within entertainment in this region and i wanted to see if they if i could find this stereotype within the first establishment of tourism to this area and if Branson in the Ozarks as a tourist attraction was established upon this stereotype. And tourism began in the very early 1900s uh, with Branson being founded in, the, in 1903. Um, so this leads me to my research question, which is, in what manners did tourism in the Ozark and Branson areas of Missouri establish itself surrounding the image of the Ozark native resident? So I want to begin with highlighting uh, some photos which I obtained from the State Historical Society of Missouri. These come from the Lynn Morrow uh, research photos and I will use her as a secondary source on one of her books that I found. But these are from her research for the Shepherd of the Hills country book she wrote. Um, on the left you'll see two photos of Ozark region natives. Um, their clothes are older and tattered. The woman is attending to hens on her farm and the boy is posing with fish that he has to use for his food. And I know it might be hard to see on the screen, but the ground in both of these photos looks pretty dry and shallow. Um, this is important due to the disparity in hunting between natives and tourists that I found in my research. The Ozarks were actually a pretty difficult place to farm for natives due to the shallow and rocky soil, so they usually had to resort for hunting for most of their food. However, during, uh, during the early 1900s, Congress wanted to take a bigger stance on wildlife protection and made hunting licenses way more expensive, and so natives could not afford to get these licenses anymore, but rich outsider tourists could afford them and hunting uh, became a very popular recreation activity for visitors and tourists and it was actually strongly advertised in brochures and travel pamphlets. And then I have this border here to signify this uh, disparity with these photos on the right which are of tourists. I have a picture of tourists swimming in the lake and their clothes are much more put together clean than the photo on the left, which I know is harder to see on the screen, but when I had a more up close encounter with these, I could recognize that. And then the other photo is of one of the cabins and it's meant to resemble a small, humble hillside cabin, kind of matching that humble down home way of life that was supposed to exist within the Ozark hillbilly natives. However, the housing reality for natives wasn't so good and their homes were often in need of dire repair and were not sturdy against Midwestern elements. These photos introduce that first context and disparity between the incoming tourists and Ozark natives. And I viewed these photos first in my research and they gave me a good basis for the rest of what I was going to find. I will move next on to probably my favorite source that I found, although it's not a positive uh, source. This is a manual for carving hill people from the 1970s, uh, carving figure caricatures in the Ozark style. And this manual told readers how to encapsulate the lifestyle and personality of a hill person within carving. Um, and this stereotype was simple, dim, goofy, and overly hospitable. And the book told readers to emphasize this in the carving of the faces, especially 
and to show a big nose, a goofy smile, and droopy eyes. The specific manual I have here is for a hill woman, and she is shown with these respective facial features, and also she is not directed to be carved with any shoes, as we can see down here. Um, the book also has instructions for hobos, cowboys, uh, banjo players, mountaineers, and also their animals, which also encapsulate that goofy, simple, dim look on their faces. Um, this book was sold in gift shops in the tourist attraction areas, um, and thus that showed that using the caricature of the hillbilly was used to make a profit and provide an activity for tourists. Next, I have uh, pictures from the Bald Knobbers Hillbilly Jamboree Collection. And the Bald Knobbers in this context uh, were a band that was established in Branson and they all played several shows there. They played overly exaggerated hillbilly music. Um, this is actually interesting because in one of my secondary sources that I found, I found that this style of hillbilly music was created by outsider marketers for tourists and was never a actual previous genre that existed. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And also, the real origins of the Bald Knobbers, uh, they were a group of vigilantes that inhabited the Ozark Mountains, and their purpose was to protect uh, liberties, property, and religion, and they often would take matters to, into their own hands and punish those that violated those freedoms. Um, however, this, this band, the Bald Knobbers Hillbilly Jamboree, took the name and just decided to portray themselves as goofy, uneducated hill people who only knew how to sing loudly and dance silly. And their goal was to make every tourist, quote, feel like a real hillbilly, which is super ironic considering that every member of the band was an outsider and was hired to form this group. Um, their facial deformities, which you can kind of see, uh, not really deformities, but they have a few, they have missing teeth and they also use super exaggerated accents. Um, these were all fake and exaggerated forms of the hillbilly stereotype to play to the entertainment and enjoyment of the tourist. And this group brought in so much money and they actually played tours all over the country. Um, they played on night shows and they recorded several widely sold albums. So it was a very popular attraction in this area. Um, these next sources are some newspaper clippings, which I unfortunately forgot to take pictures of, so I'm sorry for that. But uh, nevertheless, they're super interesting, especially the first one, which is titled Hillbilly Renewal. It's from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch from the 1980s. And I'm not kidding, this source talks about cloning hillbillies and the need for cloning them to bring back the real hill person to the Ozarks. And again, this is from the 1980s, so not that long ago. And uh, while I understand that real hillbillies had begun to be run out by fake hillbillies, for example, the hillbilly bald knobbers uh, jamboree, it's pretty problematic as it argues that the lives of hillbillies and Ozark natives are uh, founded in their genetic differences from the rest of society. And it also insinuates that bringing back this true hillbilly image is critical to the success of the Ozark area, which I assume means profit from tourists that quote, want the real thing. And I have no idea how this cloning would even be gone about and if this was ever explored again since the 80s, but it was there. And um, the next clipping I have is from a piece from 1992 titled Branson, Home of Disney, the Mob, and Bigfoot Sightings. It goes into rumors about seeing a 330 pound baby, a woman with a beard, Bigfoot, and even spotting the real E.T. This is also problematic, especially with uh, the 330 pound baby and the woman with the beard because it hints back to the stereotype of hillbillies always interbreeding and being produced with some genetic deformities. It also highlights that while tourists did want to visit the Ozarks to experience the simple, simple and humble outdoors, they also found entertainment in the weird and absurd parts of the Ozarks which further alienated the Ozark natives away from everybody else, posing them as a genetically different spectacle. Both of these pieces, again, are from the late 1900s and show that the stereotype and the use of the caricature in entertainment has perpetuated throughout the century. And as I remember from my trips to Branson not that long ago, it is still there, I believe. Um, my final source I want to highlight is a brochure and postcard titled, quote, Come to Lake Taney Como from 1940. 
I feel like this source really highlights the power of place in the Ozark region. Um, it depicts a map in which every area outside of the Ozarks is labeled with something wrong with it. We've got hurricanes down here by in the Gulf, um, alligators in swamps in Florida, mosquitoes, saying that everywhere outside of the Ozarks is undesirable, but that the Ozark region, however, is the carefree state. This highlights the tourist desire to vacation and experience the humble way of life in the Ozarks and reap all of its benefits, which included, like I said, hunting, fishing, swimming, and taking in nature, which did not exist in the urban areas they came from. This, however, again highlights the disparity between the Ozark natives and the tourists. As I mentioned before, the increase in pricing of hunting licenses prevented natives from getting those same hunting benefits, and they didn't experience the same laid-back cabin lifestyle as they often had bad living and home conditions. This brochure also hints at advertising the option to move to the Ozarks year-round, which, as I found in my other research, did happen quite often and began to alter that untouched, laid-back, pre-modern way of life that existed in the Ozarks. As tourists and residents brought cars, businesses, restaurants, etc. with them along the way. Uh, so the more tourists that chased that unaltered way of life and that romantic sentiment of the Ozarks, the, mo the more the Ozarks moved away from that image. So along with these sources and the other primary and secondary sources I did not include, I came to some solid conclusions. These were that the Ozarks were indeed founded upon marketing that humble, outdoorsy, simple way of life. And thus, this marketing had to come with encapsulating the hillbilly native, and it had to be exaggerated to tourists to get this marketing across successfully. And it was successful. The exaggeration of this way of life and of this caricature was critical to bringing in tourists because marketers and resort owners had to show how much the Ozarks contrasted with the rest of society in the United States, as we can see in this uh, brochure here. And they wanted to attract tourists to experience something they never had before. My final conclusion is something I found mainly from my secondary source research, so it was not included here, but I found that Ozark natives both protested the change that was coming to the region and also willingly participated in the new tourism economy due to their unsuccessful farming and hunting and a recognition of possible profit. Although to keep in mind this lack of hunting and farming was most likely put into place by the policies that favored the rich tourists and left um, the Ozark natives behind and they weren't able to access that same hunting, but still they did willingly participate in the new tourism economy and some of them did profit very well. Um, quoted from one of my sources, quote, when places live up to tourist expectations, the place can conform to and absorb the caricature image for its own promotion. And I think that quote really sums up what I was trying to find in my research. So I hope you guys learned something from this presentation and I sure learned a lot from this research and I think I would be able to discover a lot more and continue this into a full paper, which uh, sounds really exciting. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a good break.